The world-famous Wing Desk welcomes visitors to Bridgeport, Connecticut, home of the only helicopters that went to war, where commercial models have now joined the military production line. In Sikorsky Engineering is concentrated the know-how that produced more than 400 helicopters for military duty. Sikorsky design experience is built on nearly 50,000 hours of flight time, logged in the Arctic, the Antarctic, the tropics, as well as Europe and America. As the last of the wartime Sikorskys went down the world's first helicopter production line, they were followed by new military models and by commercial helicopters for peacetime transportation uses. What is a helicopter? It is an aircraft that can take off and land vertically without forward run. It can hover motionless indefinitely at the pilot's will. It can fly to either side or backwards. On these characteristics is based the helicopter's economic and military value. Despite its unusual appearance, the helicopter is extremely maneuverable and much more controllable than the fixed wing plane. Can you imagine even the smallest of fixed wing aircraft going straight up alongside that chimney and then starting off on any selected course? Let us take the R-5, the largest Sikorsky military model to date, as an example of maneuverability. A moment ago, you saw it make a nearly vertical takeoff. Here, it does a graceful wing over that would be the envy of any fighter pilot. Our modern helicopter, while basically slower than the average airplane, cruises at better than 85 miles an hour and handles normally as proved by this formation flight with a fixed-wing ship. To go back into history just a bit, helicopters were transformed from a dream to a practical reality back in 1939, when Igor I. Sikorsky, previously world-famous as a designer of flying boats, made his first flight in the original VS-300. This was the first successful helicopter in the Western world. In its experimental days, the VS-300 went through numerous changes in configuration. But even in its earliest stages, it clearly established its ability to land and take off from water as easily as from the ground and to fly in any direction. In configuration, the VS-300 was equipped with wheels instead of pontoons to simplify handling of the aircraft on the ground and in the hangar. This substitution made no difference in flight characteristics or controllability in the air. Back on pontoons and with a simplified single tail rotor, experimental flights were made to test landings on mud. The VS-300 proved able not only to land, but to taxi about on the slippery surface as if it were afloat. No other type of heavier-than-air transportation can do this successfully. On October 7, 1943, the VS-300 was retired from active duty to a position of prominence and honor in the Edison Institute at Dearborn, Michigan. Mr. Sikorsky was at the controls on this final flight just as he was when the newborn aircraft first tried its rotary wings. The VS-300 was barely four years old, yet next to the Wright brothers' original plane, it had probably done more to stimulate man's imagination about air travel than any other aircraft.
While the VS-300 was being readied for well-earned retirement, the Sikorsky R-4 series went into production for the United States Army Air Forces. To prove the versatility of this model, even beyond the accomplishments of the VS-300, early in 1943, the USS Bunker Hill was fitted with a small flight deck. Despite the obstacles of standing rigging and superstructure, Colonel H.F. Gregory of the Army Air Forces set the XR-4 gently on the deck. And then, because the helicopter flies equally well in all directions, took off backward. This was the world's first helicopter operation from shipboard. Another test for shipboard landing technique was made on November 25, 1943, on the deck of the Dagestan, a British merchantman assigned to convoy duty. Time after time, two Sikorsky R-4s landed and took off without difficulty from the painted landing deck on the stern of the speeding Dagestan. These tests established that two helicopters could operate successfully from a 60-foot square. Aboard the Dagestan, the two Sikorsky R-4s became the first helicopters in history to cross the Atlantic as part of convoy defense. came requests for helicopters for immediate duty in the far-flung theaters of military operations. Army had the answer ready. Taken apart into sub-assemblies for safe shipment, the helicopters were carefully stowed aboard fast, long-range transports for delivery overseas. Service in Burma, China, India, England, the South Pacific, Labrador, and Alaska earned them wide recognition for dependability. The United States Coast Guard early saw the inherent possibility of the helicopter for air-sea rescue work and developed a special life-saving technique. This included the design and development of an efficient, lightweight rescue hoist, which has already been instrumental in saving many lives. With it, injured and isolated personnel can be lifted to safety while the helicopter hovers in mid-air. Personnel can be picked up directly from the water, from wreckage, or from otherwise inaccessible places on land. A demonstration of this hoist is given here by Coast Guard Commander Frank A. Erickson, a leader in the development of air-sea rescue. On short hauls, where it is not necessary to hoist the rescued person into the cabin, he or she can be lifted part way with the hoist, flown to safety, and lower gently while the helicopter hovers. In addition to the hoist, rescue litters for ambulance and emergency service have been developed. With these, it is possible to evacuate injured and carry them gently and quickly 
direct to adequate medical care. In military use, the maneuverability and control of the Sikorsky design is self-evident. It has speed aplenty for any operational requirement. Evasive action is well within its province when necessary. Helicopters have a turn at speed, which coupled with the ability to take off and land vertically gives a wide range of usefulness. Nearing the Sikorsky plant, a chimney and a water tower might be obstacles, but not to the Sikorsky R6. It slows down, swings past the obstructions. Let's go south of the border, down Paricutin Way. Paricutin is Mexico's famous volcano. The natural phenomenon that converted a cornfield into a mountain, almost before the eyes of the astonished owner. It's a long trip, and we pack our Sikorsky R6 into a C-47 transport. After we land at Guadalajara, it's unloaded and put together. This is going to be exciting. Nobody has ever flown over the crater of an active volcano low enough and slow enough to get accurate pictures of what goes on inside. The plateau surrounding Paripatin is 7,200 feet above sea level, and the rim of the crater is an additional 1,800 feet. The air is continually filled with ash and smoke. If you look closely, you can see large segments of solid rock hurtling through the smoke column when the explosions occur. Flame and bombs weighing many tons are shot from nature's 100-foot gun barrel aperture and thrown hundreds of feet into the air. in recorded history, man has closely watched the awesome atomic power of Mother Nature in the active crater of a volcano. from the extraordinary flight, the helicopter deliberately passes the landing place and then backs up to come to rest as though it had just been down to the corner store for the afternoon paper. Forward, sideways, or backward, the helicopter is equally at home. The helicopter, because of its controllability and slow speed, proves ideal for spraying insecticide. For years, the audience at the popular concerts in Yale Bowl at New Haven had to contend with myriads of mosquitoes. Using a Sikorsky R-4 helicopter assigned by the U.S. Coast Guard to the Department of Agriculture, the arena and seats and the area immediately outside were given a liberal treatment of DDT. That ended the mosquito menace.
The helicopter is a natural for any type of crop spraying. Here are typical examples of the R4, R5, and R6 in the air at the same time. By the end of the war, some 400 of the three Sikorsky military models have been produced. Anybody who has ever tried to use an automobile bumper jack to change a flat tire can see the wheel-changing advantages of the helicopter. That's the way to do it. Just sit still there in the air and the job is done in a jiffy. Seriously, this is just another demonstration of the perfect controllability of the helicopter. More helicopter history was made on January 10th, 1946, when a standard Army Sikorsky R-5, through the cooperation of Air Technical Service Command, Wright Field, later in the day, equipped with jury seats, it carried 18 persons aloft, just to indicate what the future may unfold. November 29th, 1945, a northeaster was blowing in gusts up to 60 miles an hour when an R-5 was called on to save the lives of two men in peril on a barge aground on Penfield Reef in Long Island Sound, not far from the Sikorsky plant. A telephoto lens brings the barge close into range, although actually the wreck was more than one quarter of a mile from the beach. The first man was hoisted to safety and flown to shore in the cabin. Time was saved by bringing the second man to safety without lifting him all the way up. He was hoisted clear of the wreckage on the deck, carried to the shore, and deposited gently on the beach. This episode is typical of the many rescues credited to Sikorsky helicopters. Early in 1946 came the S-51, the first Sikorsky helicopter designed for commercial service. It's a four-place model based on the war-proved R-5. Its performance was therefore already proven before the pilot model came from the production line. The record set by the R-5 in January 1946 indicated the range and speed of the new S-51. The instrument panel of the S-51 is a pilot's delight. All flight instruments are grouped clearly within the pilot's vision at all times. Headphones are plugged in directly overhead. Control levers are where the hands rest naturally. And skillful soundproofing makes conversation possible in an ordinary tone of voice. Under its pleasing lines, the S-51 boasts a rugged stamina and freedom from maintenance problems that were apparent in the operation of this first unit from the production line. After exhaustive tests, it received its approved type certificate for commercial operation from the Civil Aeronautics Authority in May 1946. off to the races, not as a contestant, but as a flying tripod for an aerial movie camera. Park, New Hampshire, the S-51 proved that monitoring races by motion picture was a job the helicopter could fill to perfection. From the home of engineering manager Igor I. Sikorsky, the S-51 proves its future usefulness in executive travel. 
Requiring no prepared landing strip, the helicopter awaits the designer close by his residence. No need for a long drive to an airport. The helicopter's airport is practically anywhere. One comfortably accommodates three adult passengers. A baggage compartment in the tail cone leaves the cabin free of encumbrances. The passenger seat, slightly wider than the standard automobile seat, provides each of the three riders with elbow room. Unusual visibility is obtained by the ample use of plexiglass of special optical quality. For pilot training, the passenger seat is replaced by a single seat and dual controls are installed in the center position. For cargo use, the rear seat is removed. to do than a department store elevator stopping at the main floor, the S-51 lands to discharge its passengers. No forward run is required. Among the first commercial uses of the helicopter to be tested was air mail pickup and delivery. Here we are waiting on the roof of Chicago's famous merchandise mart for the arrival of the first five cent air mail. There goes the Fairchild C-82, the flying mail car overhead. At the municipal airport, the S-51 is waiting for us. A moment of activity to make a transfer. And here comes the helicopter. Sullivan, the then second assistant postmaster general, brings in the first mail pouch. Only minutes have been taken for what on the ground is a time-consuming step in getting air mail from airport to post office. Tests in Los Angeles and New York have further established the value of the helicopter and air mail service. Word was received of an accident not far from the airport at Gander, Newfoundland. The Coast Guard shipped two Sikorsky helicopters, an R-4 and an R-6, 
to aid the injured. They were on a wooded mountainside behind terrain which made overland rescue impossible. Flown north in Air Transport Command C-54s, the helicopters were quickly reassembled and tested by their ground crews. Forward camp, the R-4 lands with supplies and takes off again. In stretchers, the injured are carried to the emergency landing platform on the Muskeg and flown in helicopters to the lake shore where a Catalina waits to ferry them to a hospital. No wheeled vehicle could traverse the soggy surface of the Muskeg, where walking was a hardship. And even the helicopter welcomed a wooden landing platform, no matter how small. The final record was complete, aided by Catalina and ambulance. The helicopters had carried all 11 injured to civilization. model is the two-place S-52. It is the first production helicopter to have all metal rotor blades as standard equipment. Sikorsky two-place design experience includes the military R-4 and R-6, to which has been added the benefit of the research and development facilities of both United Aircraft and Sikorsky Engineering. The S-52, first announced at the National Aircraft Show at Cleveland, November 1946, is the sixth Sikorsky production model. 